Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob, and this is my 300 square foot tiny home in Joshua Tree, California. My butt is hot. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot. I'm really excited to show you this tiny house and before we jump into the inside, I just wanted to give you a quick overview on this house. This is actually the second time that I've built the house. The first time I built it in Los Angeles, California, about two and a half hours away from here. If you're interested in learning about that house and the process of building it, I'll leave a link up here for you to watch after this video. Like I said, this is my second time building this tiny house. I learned a lot building it the very first time that I did it and I made a lot of upgrades to this house because I had a bigger budget to do so. All in for my first Los Angeles tiny home, I spent $72,000 Whereas on this home, I spent $165,000, which I know sounds crazy that it came in at twice the cost, but you have to keep in mind that the very first time I built this, I did a lot of the work myself. I did all of the general contracting, and because I live two and a half hours away from here, that's just not something that was feasible for this build. I opted to go with the general contractor to oversee this build, and I mostly managed this entire construction from Los Angeles. One of the biggest differences that you're gonna see on this versus my LA home is on my LA home, I went with a Douglas fir for the siding, which looks good, but it's obviously, it's a much lower grade wood. Whereas this is a Maranti or a Mahogany. And I actually went with this on my Mariposa build too, which I did a video on that two weeks ago. I'll leave a link right here for you. This wood is very expensive, but it, it looks much nicer. It's much more stunning. It's definitely a lot more expensive than Douglas fir. And then also in this house, we actually have landscaping. In the other house, we don't have quite as much landscaping. It's just my backyard with kind of plants here and there. We opted for plants that are native to the desert because we are in the middle of the desert and we want to be true to that with our landscaping. So we have a lot of yuccas, we have different cacti, we have an elephant ear cactus and octilo here, and it just adds to the overall vibe of the entire house. And then here we got our carport. It is big enough for one car. I mean, you can park on the driveway too. We have an entire driveway here, but we do have one dedicated space that is something that is required from the entire county. But considering that it is Joshua Tree, it does get really hot here. So when I designed the carport, I purposely designed it to kind of work as an outdoor patio as well so that people can choose to park on the driveway if they want and hang out under here, or they can hang out on the back patio, which we have in the back of the house too. We used to have a shade cell out here, but we just recently built this addition right here, which is a pop out for a washer and dryer so that people can do their laundry at this Airbnb. Let's just go ahead and head inside because that's what we're here for, right? But actually, before we go inside, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you to please like and subscribe to my video. It does help me with the YouTube algorithm and it will give you more tiny house and DIY updates from me, Rob Bilt. Well, that's not my name, it's... One thing that you'll notice as we go inside here, I have a ring camera for security purposes. The entire outside of the house has security cameras as well. And I've got a Yale uh, smart lock here so that I can control the keypad for my phone and I can change out codes in between guests that stay here for Airbnb. This is awkward. No! All right, let's go inside. All right, now that I got the door open, come on to the inside. This is the inside of Casa Conejo. Let's talk about why this place is called Casita Conejo. The area that we're in is actually called Conejo, and so that's Spanish for rabbit. And because of that, I decided to completely embrace the rabbit motif all throughout the interior design of the house. You'll see it sprinkled in through things like the actual key holder of the house, different art pieces that I had commissioned, all the way to the wallpaper of the house. 
One of the biggest changes that we made from the very first version of this house is we put the front door right here. Originally the window was right here and the front door was over there, but that completely ruined the space in that you weren't able to put a sofa in the entire tiny house of my LA version. But because this door is here, we have now completely optimized this space. And now we have a sofa, which makes a huge improvement for a tiny house, which is really convenient for hosting more than two people in this house, because we have one bed upstairs. And if people really want to embrace that tiny house living mentality, we can fold this out and host four people if they're willing to get cozy. Now, if you'll follow me into the kitchen, spoiler alert, it's not really that far of a walk. Uh, you'll see that we basically do have a full-size kitchen in here. I mean, of course it is a tiny house, so it's probably not gonna be as big of, <laughs> of a kitchen as you might see in a typical home, but this is one place where I really splurged and one of the biggest costs associated with this house. I know that a lot of people out there are gonna say that $165,000 is an absurd amount of money for a tiny house, but when you consider the amount of money that it takes to put a foundation, to put tile, to put an entire kitchen, in an, an entire Ikea kitchen, costs really start to add up. And so for here, I really chose Ikea because Ikea basically is the best modular choice for all kitchen sizes. Now, as far as color palette is concerned, there are a few colors that I wanted to highlight in this house, but specifically for the kitchen, I really wanted to go with black, white, and kind of this dark teal color that you see here. Basically one of the main colors in the house, and this is sprinkled all throughout the house from throw pillows to door color. You can see here, even the door matches, and that helps really build a cohesive style and design palette all throughout the house. As far as your kitchen essentials are concerned, we got you completely covered. We have a full-size microwave here. We have a full-size oven here. And while this sink is a little bit smaller than most sinks that you'll find in a regular home, for a tiny house, this will completely do the job. And then we even have a full-size fridge right here too. There are a lot of sacrifices that you have to make when building a tiny home, especially when it comes to optimizing your space, but the kitchen was not one where I wanted to cut corners. I really provide people with an entire kitchen stocked with oils, spices, plates, pots, and pans. Nothing is missing in this couch and it really helps create a much better experience. <laughs> Nothing is missing in this kitchen at all, and that's because I really want to provide the best cooking experience for my Airbnb guests. As far as tiny houses are concerned, I actually think that this is a pretty spacious bathroom. I mean, most tiny houses on wheels are, the bathrooms are about this big. The shower head is over the toilet and you're really cramped and you have to make sacrifices there. This is one of the most used rooms in the entire house. So I didn't want people perpetually frustrated hitting their elbows against the walls. And if you're really considering it to my bathroom in Los Angeles, I actually think that this is about the same size. For the design, I kept it really simple. I went with the subway tile. But given that everyone does subway tile these days, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I did a completely straight lace stacked design here. And then I accented it here with this kind of Spanish Moroccan tile. It's also gonna be on the floor tile here in the bathroom. And we also use that in the stairs throughout the house as well. Now that straight lace tile design that we did in the bathroom, I wanted to thread that throughout the house. So I opted to go ahead and do that for all the flooring as well. Typically you do staggered tiles, but again, I wanted to just stand out a little bit. We carry that through the entire house, straight lacing it even on the stairs. And then we accent every single stair with that Moroccan tile to just give it that nice finishing touch. Now let's talk about one of my favorite aspects of this house and it's the gallery wall that you see right behind me. Like I said, I was really trying to fit that rabbit motif and I really knew that I could make that shine by having a gallery wall that exhibited different local artists. I even commissioned a friend to paint me a custom piece for the living room, which I really think adds to the overall vibe of the place. What do you think of the rabbit theme? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you have a big fear of rabbits and you wanna stay here and finally conquer your fears once and for all? Either way, leave a comment down below and let me know. Let's go upstairs. Oh. All right, now we're to one of my favorite parts of the house and that's the bedroom. And that's because I really think that this is one of the coziest spots in the entire house. We've got a little bench here. We've got a little mirror here if you're very vain and you just wanna look at yourself all day like I just was. And then I have an originally commissioned Keith Haring painting right above me. Now this cost me $30,000, but I think it was totally worth it. No, I'm just kidding, it's a reproduction, probably illegal. I thought that this was a rabbit DJing, but turns out it is actually a dog, but close enough and most normal people wouldn't know that. We've got a full-size closet here. Well, a full-size closet for a tiny house. And for an Airbnb, this is totally fine. I mean, this will fit all of your luggage, anything that you wanna hang up. And I even splurged on the oak hangers because I'm extra like that. From a bedding standpoint, we have a full-size bed right here. And we actually, if you see where I'm standing right here, I have about a foot of space. We could totally put a queen-size bed here and we actually have in the past, but considering that I wanted it to feel nice and airy up here and it's an Airbnb where people are gonna be staying for one to two nights anyways, I think a full-size bed is more than comfortable. One of my favorite things about this entire setup is that these blinds, when you open them, you get a complete view of Coyote Hole right in front of the house, which is a feature that I really love about this. I mean, there's nothing like waking up, having coffee, and just looking at a view. One of the reasons why the room is my favorite spot is because it leads out to this balcony right behind me. Oh, Roadrunner. 
Yeah. No, meep, 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 where are you going? <laughs> no, no, Roadrunner, meep, meep. Yeah, you can kind of see them right there. Well, good enough. Being a tiny house, obviously it can get a little crammed in there if you stay there all day. So for me, outdoor space is super important. So this is one aspect of the build that I completely splurged on compared to my Los Angeles build that didn't have a balcony, but it's 79 square feet. And while that may sound small, we have an entire balcony here, totally fine for hanging out with your friends, having your coffee, having a beer out here, watching the sunset and the sunrise. Or if you really like to live on the edge, just look at the sun. All right, that was my tiny house tour. Thanks for watching. Now we're gonna head over to Casa Mariposa for a quick construction update there. Let's go. We're literally three minutes away from Casa Conejo and the cool thing about both of these houses is that I am three minutes away from the National Park, which is such an important thing whenever you're airbnb is location. So both of these are pretty close to that. Basically what we've done since the last video is we've added the different wood here. This is called Moranti. Moranti is a cousin of mahogany and it's actually pretty expensive. We could have saved a little bit of money going with something like a redwood or a cedar but I think that this gives a much more premium look. Um, mahogany is very expensive, it's a hardwood, so it's gonna withstand the elements a little bit more. From a cost standpoint, you're looking at 250 a linear foot. So basically one 10 foot board is gonna cost you $25. I think total in this house, we have about $2,000 invested just in this, and it's uh, a lot of upkeep too. We stained it with an oil, uh, with an Ipe oil, and then we have to stain we have to seal the edges down here as well because if you don't, your wood will end up cracking. In Joshua Tree, it gets super, super hot. It is literally 98 degrees right now, so you wanna take the best measures in protecting the different materials because otherwise, you're gonna to have to replace it in a year or two, and you don't wanna do that unless you're dumb. So from a concrete standpoint, here's what we're looking at. We're gonna have full concrete under the carport and in the pergola area, and then we're gonna have what's called a concrete apron or a sidewalk come around here, but I am gonna leave a little space right here for some, for some cacti. And I'm gonna do a complete open patch right here where we're gonna have a bunch of native plants that are native to the California desert. Actually, you can kind of see some of them right here. Maybe we'll even catch a lizard. So we've got these, which I think are either yuccas. They're pointy bastards, that's all I know. And then we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got choyas. Uh, you don't want to touch these. I've done, I've touched these on accident. These are very difficult to get out of your fingers. It's very painful. We saw some kind of iguana down here earlier. So we'll have these kinds of plants in that little plant patch right there. And then we'll bring it back over here where we're going to continue our sidewalk all the way around here. Bring it all the way to the back. We're going to have a privacy fence to kind of turn this way over here, but we don't want to put it too high to where it actually covers up the view over here. We want it to just be enough of a security fence so that people felt, feel like they're fenced in and they're kind of safe, even though the neighborhood is very nice. And so the fence is gonna come out this way and we have all this space over here. Uh, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do here. It could be anything, it could be a bocce ball uh, court. I'll probably make some kind of Zen garden because what's better than being in a hundred degree weather in a Zen garden? Oh God, privacy fence again. We don't want the fence to be so high that it's covering up the view from the window. We still want it to be, uh, you can, we still want you to be able to stand in the window and look out and not have your, your view obscured because that's one of the main selling points for this house. Today we're gonna build an entire pergola in this space. It'll be a 400 square foot pergola that's basically the size of this and it'll match the slope up here. But yeah, I think we're about a month away from finishing this thing, so I'm super excited. Um, as soon as it's live and it's furnished, I'm gonna be doing another video. So if you have any specific questions about this property, Leave me a comment down below and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. But for now, I will catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. Oh, did you see that thing gliding? All right, we got a live one in the house. We're in the middle of nature. You got to expect these kind of things. I, there's a little lizard right here. Don't want to kill him because uh, he's a nice little lizard. So I just got to lead him out. I need to be his shepherd. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he's letting me do this. All right, come on. No, no, no. All right. Boom, Amazon box. I'm gonna lead him home. Country roads, take me home. Go ahead. It's like he, he knows. He's like, I don't wanna go in there. Ah. We did it! <laughs> He's out. You're free, you're free! All right, now for real, I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Bill. <laughs>